does anybody know age group? Because when you're talking about um, youth, a youth audience, um, and you think about kids growing up, the span of one to two years is like a decade for an adult. So it's very, very specific. So for the people here who are writing um, in the sort of youth literature, you know uh, how important it is to know how, what the word count is, what style is appropriate. And there's somebody over here who's doing picture books. Yeah, yeah. So you know darn well what you're, you know, what you're aiming for, because that's what the marketplace and what the, the children of that age group can best take advantage of. So a young adult novel, so what would you say a young adult is? What age group? 13, 13, 13 to 18. Yeah, we'll say 13 to 18. So think of yourself or any other kid you've known. Wow, 13 to 18 is like, must be two, might as well be two different life forms. So that's quite a, quite a span. Okay, so what kind of um, word count are you looking here typically? This one's really, it can really vary. The typical one is it's about the same as a novella. It's about 40 to 50K. Or <laughs> it can go up to about um, 80 to 120. Wow. Anybody know why? The big, big fantasy novels. The Twilight books. Um, you know, oh, the, uh, the Harry Potter. Harry Potter ones. They can go up to 120. But unless they're one of those big, huge, sprawling kind of fantasy fiction adventures and the, um, the Hunger Games. Those are huge. If you've ever seen them, books, I say big, big novels. Lord of the Rings. Yep. Oh, massive. Okay. But the typical YA novel is about this. About 40, 50 K like a novella. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So how about a short story? Oh. Uh, I'd say four to six thousand words. Okay. Everybody agree with that? Four to six thousand words for a short story? Mm -hmm. well, yeah. It could probably be fifteen hundred to six thousand. Depends on three to five k. Yeah. You could have them go. They are more than that, but that's an average. So let's say if you are entering a short story competition, pretty typically that's the word count you'll see. You know, there'll be um, a maximum unless they stipulate. So this is what they call a long, long short story. Okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Short, short stories. About and then a short, years. short is about, usually, typically about what? Yeah. So, if you, again, I, I judge a lot of writing competitions, and this is usually a minimum, unless you, there's the little postcard size. 1,500 to about three. Okay. And then you, after that, anybody else here? Here's a, a thought for you. How about an essay? Anybody know the difference between a, um, an essay and a personal essay? But you know. Well, when I think of essays, I think of academic writing. Right. Mm -hmm. The personal essays is uh, more of a first-person account. Okay. So, the thing that, that generally shifts it, yeah, I agree with you, um, is that the personal part of it is what? It has opinion. That's what shifts it automatically into. So if you are again um, uh, looking to submit something somewhere, make sure it's what kind of essay it is. Is it more of an academic or, or more of an objective essay? Or is it more subjective, which is the personal essay, which is very popular. It's a very popular mm -hmm. form of reading for the public. Why? Because they get a ton of information, but they get the real person behind there. Right? And that's what we want to feel in many cases. And that's why the big shift, too, in journalism and essay writing is we want to know that there's a person behind the page. Does that make sense for everybody? Mm -hmm. And a personal essay has opinion. So you present all the facts, you, you know, you present the, if there's an argument, if there is a conclusion. And then, but you give your own personal opinion. So personal essay is very a very common uh, place to uh, submit to in writing competitions and also for sales. How about articles? How many words are those? 
in the essays, mm -hmm. there, but they, they tend to be a little bit longer. For instance, um, like op-ed pieces, you know in Georgia Strait, mm -hmm. you know they have the big essay pieces, what do you think those are about? Yeah, they're about 3,000 words. And those are, and they're also known as a feature. They're often seen also as a feature article. As soon as, um, as soon as it comes out of that very sort of academic, very objective thing, you think about Georgia Strait and those feature articles that they have usually one per edition. They are very extensive, very involved. And um, that's, that's a heck of a good place to, to really start looking at how they're constructed, how it's put together. They are particularly well done. Articles. Articles. Okay. There we go. Okay, so articles, as I was saying earlier, is now, it's not as much a piece of news, it is not as much a piece of journalism, as it is a story. That's what they're really looking for now, is a story. And a short one. So the most common way to get your, your material out there is what they call mini articles. So if you develop the skill of writing um, 300, whoops, 300 to 500 words. How many people have written in this size? Yeah, 300 to 500? Yeah. yeah. That is probably one of the most common ways of getting a piece published anywhere in nonfiction of any kind. Because oftentimes they're small enough that they can <coughs> be accommodated in, in a publication. So this is a really great size to get to learn. They're also what I call accordion size pieces that if you can, because you can get it even shorter, there's things like, ever, anybody heard of postcard fiction? Flash fiction? Mm -hmm. They're actual whole stories, like all the components of a story in a hundred words. Can you imagine? That would be tough. Yeah. Anybody here write poetry? Yes, we know that. Anybody here write haiku? Yeah. Yeah. What's that? That's a Asian. That's a very short story in a exactly. like very exactly. Yeah. It doesn't contain all the components of a larger poem. Yeah, yeah, of course it does. Does. yeah, And doesn't a poem contain all the larger components of a short story? Mm -hmm. Sure yes. it does. Yeah. Oh, You're not. Uh, okay. oh, you can have a poem that's all about uh, an impression, a feeling. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't mean a character yeah. or a setting sometimes. Exactly. Poetry is very versatile. Oh, of course it is. It's also extremely subjective. That's why I <laughs> never <laughs> judge poetry. <laughs> <laughs> never. <laughs> Okay, so these are kind of like showing you some sizes and some options too. But as I said, um, one of the best ways to get your stuff out in print is to get this, this size. Anybody want to venture a guess how many magazines there are in BC alone or how many publications? Anybody ever looked up the BC Association of um, uh, book publishers, magazine publishers? Go online and check them out and see how many magazines are published just in BC alone and across the country. How many of them have are, are available for um, publication. They mostly want these small pieces as well. Okay, any, any more about this? There's a, there's a book you can get called The Writer's Market. Yeah. I have an older version of it, but it's every publisher everywhere around the world. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, it is. It's one of the... the Basic yeah, kit. <laughs> yeah, basic kit items. But if you go online and look at the uh, Canadian um, uh, Association of Book Publishers, Publishers and Magazine Publishers, you will see their members um, are uh, is pretty extensive, whether by province or across the country. And so that's a good place to start, and it's free. Just go mm -hmm. online. Okay. So let's look at um, some components of, I was saying, of a well-crafted 